Hello everyone! Pivot tables are great at aggregating data. But not all charts work with pivot tables. For example, if I try to apply the sunburst chart, I'll get a message that this is not possible. Yet this sunburst chart seems to be linked to the pivot table. In this video you will see a new and easy method how to link such charts to the pivot table. This method uses a spill range and works in Microsoft 365 and Excel for the web. In the second part of the video I will also show you how to reprogram a slicer to expand or collapse different categories in the chart. Unfortunately, macros don't work in Excel for the web. Let's see how to do this. As a first step, I'm going to convert this data range to a table by clicking it and pressing Ctrl and T together. This is good practice because I'm going to add a pivot table. So if I need to add more rows later, I will just need to refresh the pivot table. I will add product category, brand, and product fields to the rows area and sales thousands to the values area. Remove subtotals and grand totals. And the report layout has to be in tabular form with all items repeating. I can't apply the sunburst chart directly to the pivot table, but I can apply it to the spill range of a formula containing a dynamic array function. I'm going to use the offset function to give back a spill range containing the data from the pivot table, and then link the chart to this spill range. I'm going to use the sunburst chart, and for this chart type, it doesn't really matter if I include the headers or not. I'll just include them. So the function should start in cell A3, stay in this cell, and from this cell, take a range with the number of rows equal to the number of the entries in column A, given back by the count A function. And the number of columns in this spill range will equal to the number of entries in the third row, given back by the count a function. The spill range of the formula displays the data from the pivot table, and I will link the sunburst chart to this spill range. Let's add the sunburst chart. I need to make one more adjustment to the formula because if I collapse parts of the pivot table, then the spill range will display zeros, which will be also displayed in the sunburst chart. To avoid this, I will add a condition. that the cells in the spill range displaying zeros should be empty, else the result of the formula should be displayed. And the chart is dynamic. And if I add more data to the original source table, and refresh the pivot table, the new data will be displayed in the spill range and the chart. 
Let's add a slicer for product category. Normally, slicers filter pivot tables, but I'm going to use a Visual Basic Replications macro to expand or collapse parts of the pivot table based on the slicer selection. The categories selected in the slicer will be expanded, but in the slicer always at least one category has to be selected. So before applying the macro, I'm going to use a trick to add an extra button for collapsing all categories. In the source data, I'm going to change one of the categories and type the word none. Refresh the pivot table. Format the slicer. Then go back to the source data and undo the change. Refresh the pivot table again, and I will be left with an extra button. The slicer should not filter this pivot table, so I'm going to add another pivot table. which will display the slicer selection. For this, I'm going to right-click on the slicer and under Report Connections, change the connection to another pivot table. I'll call this pivot table pivot filter. And the first pivot table to which the spill range is linked. Pivot expand. Now let's open the Visual Basic Editor with the key combination Alt and F11. And on Sheet 3, on which the pivot table called Pivot Filter is located, that is the pivot table to which the filter is connected, add the following macro. Let me walk you through this code. Option explicit at the top is necessary for making sure that the variable names are typed correctly in the macro later on. The macro is started when the pivot table is updated on sheet 3, and this pivot table has to be called pivot filter. Two variables are declared. PF is going to be the pivot field that will be collapsed or expanded, and item is the slicer item. The next line is for troubleshooting. The variable PF will be defined as pivot field product category of the pivot table called pivot expand on sheet 2. At the beginning, this pivot field is collapsed. Then comes the loop. The macro is going to loop through the items of the slicer call slicer product category and check for each item if it is selected or not. If an item is selected, then the pivot item of the pivot field product category corresponding to the slicer item will be expanded.
Let's test. If I select single categories, the selected category is going to be expanded. If only item none is selected in the slicer, then all categories remain collapsed. Because such a pivot item does not exist. Let's see what happens if I choose multi select in the slicer. A slicer does not allow the user to deselect all categories. At least one category has to be selected. But because there is the item none, which does not correspond to any real category, the slicer gets tricked. If I deselect none, all categories will be selected again in the slicer. If you would like to use this code in your own file, then please adapt the name of the pivot field that has to be expanded or collapsed, the names of the pivot tables, and the sheet name on which pivot expand pivot table is located as well as the name of the slicer, to your own file. The macro has to be embedded on the sheet on which the pivot table is located, which is connected to the slicer. You will find the name of the pivot table here. and the name of the slicer under slicer settings. Please like and subscribe for more content like this.